morning, Low Country, and welcome to another episode of Palmetto Life. I'm your host, Emily Zuhowski. Today we are starting off diving into tea culture. The vision of For All the Tea in Charleston is to share with South Carolinians Chinese tea culture, or the way of tea. <laughs> Guys, I'm here with Richard Kligler, who is a tea enthusiast. That's what you call yourself, right? I'd say so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't refer to myself as a tea master at this stage, but getting closer. Okay, well, I feel like you're a tea master to me because look at this room, look at everything that we have around us. Talk about this room that we're in right now and where all of this came from. All the teaware that you see came from, from China. It was made in China. Uh, most of the ceramics are porcelain from Jing Zhen, which was the birthplace of, of porcelain. And I have also a lot of clay teapots, and it took me 15 years to develop this collection. Wow. So how did you get into tea? How did you become a tea enthusiast? Well, well, thanks to my wife, Marsha. We moved to Hong Kong in 2005 uh, with my whole family. My daughter was five or six at the time. My son was seven or eight. Uh, she worked for a major apparel company, and they wanted to for her to go on assignment in Hong Kong. When we arrived, one of her manufacturers gave us a beautiful welcome gift, which was a silk box, and inside of it was loose tea. I had never drank loose tea. Wow. The only tea I drank really was Lipton when I was ill, and mm -hmm. I'd have some honey and lemon in it. And when I tasted it, I was just amazed by the flavor. So complex, so delicious. So I said, you know, I'm going to study tea while I'm over here in Hong Kong, which was only supposed to be for two years. We ended up there for 12 years. And I visited practically every tea house in Hong Kong. I became very friendly with uh, two tea houses, Fu Ming Tang and Ming Cha. And they kind of took me under their wings because they never met a Westerner that was so interested in their culture, especially the tea culture. Wow. So I started to study tea, and my passion just grew more and more to think that it has a 5,000-year history, uh, that it's, it's really woven into that fabric. This was made by a famous uh, silversmith in Shanghai back in the 1800s. Uh, he was known for doing chrysanthemums uh, in a very protruded way. As you can see, he also has chrysanthemums coming up the spout and also on the tea handle. And this is a functional teapot, and it's uh, Luan Wo is the silversmith. So what I'm going to turn you on to is, is a tea called Da Hong Pao. Da Hong Pao means Great Red Robe. And back in the Ming Dynasty in the 1300s, uh, in Fujian Province, there was uh, a emperor whose wife was apparently very ill. And he went out to all his subjects and said, if anybody can cure my wife, I'll give you the emperor's Great Red Robe. So lo and behold, here comes his young monk from uh, Wu Yishan, and he had a little satchel of tea with him. And he went to the emperor and said, why don't you give this tea to your wife? And I guess months later, he was working his way back to Wu Yishan, and the emperor said my wife was cured miraculously by the tea. So the emperor went, well, here's my great red robe. And the monk says, no, I can't take the red robe. I mean, I'm a monk, and I can't take the gift. He says, I'm the emperor, you'll take the gift. So he brought it back to Wu Yishan, to the mountains, and there were six trees there that he picked the leaves from. And he took the robe and put it over those six trees. That was 1300s. And to this day, those six trees are still there. Um, the last time it was auctioned was in the early 2000 period. And it went for like $50,000 an ounce for these. Oh my gosh. This is an oolong tea. It's semi-fermented. So what you normally do is you put it into what in English is a um, lotus, and you smell it, you admire it, then you pass it around to your guests. So the first steeping, you'll discard. Some people think it's to get rid of the uh, 
impurities in the tea, but it's generally to wake up the tea, so you really taste the flavor of the tea. And of course my tea pet. will get his bath for the day. Almost every Chinese has a tea pet. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that at some point it'll turn possibly this color. And if you'll then the tea pet has a soul and it's arrived at that point. Mm. So with loose leaf tea, you don't need to brew it for minutes. Actually, it's more like seconds. Mm. Because the concentration of the tea and the quality of the tea Okay. It does have a lot of complex flavor on the back, too. So what is for all the tea, Charleston? Well, tea in Charleston, uh, what I do is hold for family, friends, business colleagues, um, tea presentations, basically, uh, or a guided tea tasting, as some will refer to it, and we'll enjoy different types of tea. Yeah, what have you heard from people that have, that have done this experience with you? I got a standing ovation one time. I was so, I was wow. so, I was so excited. Yes, um, they usually just, they really love it. People really enjoy the, not only the taste, but some of the stories I have from, from China. And mm -hmm. I even worked on a tea farm one time. Wow. Because I wanted to experience what it'd be like waking up early in the morning, picking buds, mm -hmm. and seeing it go to the processing and then to market. Mm -hmm. So that was really... Uh, quite an experience. Yeah, you've really made yourself an expert in this topic. And here in South Carolina, there's a lot of history when it comes to tea. Can you talk about that? Yes, actually, it has a storied history uh, about tea, uh, talking about Henry Middleton became the governor of South Carolina. He had a friend, Andre Michaud from France, who's a famous botanist, and he brought over camellia, camellias and camellia sinensis, which is the tea plant. All teas are made mm -hmm. from the same tea plant. I want to thank everybody for viewing this and learning a little bit about tea. But if you want to have a unique experience, friends, family, or business associates, uh, please contact me at my website, www.forallthetea.com.